In January, I did a video series about the hero's journey and I took it step by step from the beginning to the end, looking at each stage of the journey and comparing the two main versions, The Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell and The Writer's Journey by Christopher Bulger. In this video, I'm going to be revisiting the hero's journey, but what I'm going to be talking about is actually the character archetypes. So in The Writer's Journey, Christopher Volger described eight character archetypes that typically appear in stories that follow the hero's journey. These archetypes are the hero, the mentor, the threshold guardian, the herald, the shapeshifter, the shadow, the ally, and the trickster. And he says, there are, of course, many more archetypes, as many as there are human qualities to dramatize in stories. However, these are kind of the main ones that he identified as being typical and occurring very frequently. So in this video, I'm going to talk about each of these archetypes, what it looks like, and common examples of it in popular stories. It seems kind of silly to try and tell you what the hero is, because I'm sure you know what the hero of a story is, right? But one thing that I do want to point out is that not every character that we would consider heroic or one of the good guys is the hero, hero's journey archetype. Other positive characters take on other roles, like the mentor or the ally, but usually these stories follow one central protagonist who undertakes the hero's journey. Sometimes there'll be more than one. Like, I'm pretty sure that in Lord of the Rings, which I'm currently rereading right now, that Frodo and Aragorn both undertake very different versions of the hero's journey, and both would be the hero archetype in their own unique ways. However, like for instance, in the Harry Potter series, Harry is the hero of the story, even though characters like Ron and Hermione, or some of the members of the Order of the Phoenix, are very heroic. Harry is the central protagonist, so he fits the hero archetype. Other examples are um, Katniss from The Hunger Games, Luke Skywalker from Star Wars. Star Wars very famously follows the hero's journey with Luke as the, as the hero. Rey from the Star Wars sequels. Basically, any time that you have someone who is on a journey of growth and self-discovery against a great force of evil that they really don't seem to have a chance against, that usually is the hero archetype. The hero usually doesn't act on their own though, and that is where the allies come in. The allies are the people that the hero of the story can count on to help and support them on their journey. These might be very significant characters who are deeply involved in the hero's journey, or they might be kind of peripheral and mostly there just to provide occasional support and help. Often though, the hero will have one or two very close friends that they can really count on, like Frodo in The Lord of the Rings has Sam, Harry Potter has Ron and Hermione, Luke Skywalker has Han and Leia, and so on. I have noticed, though, that often at the beginning the hero is mostly alone with maybe just their mentor and one or two close friends, and by the end they have a lot more people there to help them. Like, for instance, I think the fifth Harry Potter book is a huge turning point in which before he basically just had Ron and Hermione, but in The Order of the Phoenix he meets the Order of the Phoenix, which is a group of adults who are there basically fighting for the same cause that he is, and he also forms Dumbledore's army where he brings a lot of his school peers together and teaches them how to defend themselves, and they end up uh, fighting in the Battle of Hogwarts on his side, helping to defend the castle against Voldemort. In a similar way, at the beginning of Star Wars A New Hope, Luke Skywalker, basically, he's on his own, he needs to rescue Princess Leia, he needs to get R2-D2's message back to the Rebel Alliance, he has Obi-Wan with him and he meets Han and Leia along the way, but it's not until the end of the movie and then on into the future ones that he actually meets other members of the Rebel Alliance and has them to count on when he faces the Empire. Closely related to the allies would be the mentor, but the mentor, rather than being one of the hero's peers, someone who is there to help and support them, they are someone who is older and more experienced and is there to guide them in some way. Typically, they're not able to solve the hero's problems for them, but they can share their wisdom and they can help the hero to learn and grow for when they do eventually face whatever obstacles are in their path. The traditional mentor character is a wise old man, like Obi-Wan Kenobi, Gandalf, Dumbledore, and so on and so forth, but there are different variations. Like, for instance, in The Wizard of Oz, Glinda is Dorothy's mentor, and in The Hunger Games, Haymitch is Katniss and Peeta's mentor. And he's definitely not the typical Gandalf-style wise old man. But still, he has been where Katniss and Peeta are 
he survived it, and he is trying to keep them alive. So he definitely fulfills that role of the mentor. The mentor often also doubles as the herald, but they don't necessarily, and it's a kind of different role. The herald is the one that shows up to give the hero the call to adventure. So if you remember from my previous hero's journey videos, the call to adventure is basically what notifies the hero that, you know, there is some kind of heroic quest to go on. And the herald is the one who shows up to invite them on the adventure. Often that will also be the mentors doing, like Gandalf in Lord of the Rings, for instance, and also in The Hobbit. He shows up in the Shire, you know you're about to be sent on a quest. Hagrid, who is one of many mentor characters in Harry Potter, fulfills a similar role. Even though the Hogwarts letters have been arriving, the Dursleys haven't let Harry read them. And so when Hagrid shows up and gives Harry his letter and tells him that he's a wizard, that's very much where the call to adventure comes in. And so Hagrid, in addition to being one of Harry's mentors, also doubles as the herald there. In the Wizard of Oz movie, Glinda is both the mentor and the herald. She's the one who tells Dorothy to follow the yellow brick road and go see the wizard. And at the end, she is also the one who tells Dorothy to click her heels together three times and wish to be sent back to Kansas. However, in the book, they're actually two separate characters. The unnamed Good Witch of the North sends Dorothy on the quest. And then Glinda, who is the Good Witch of the South, is the one who tells her how to get home. So the roles of Harold and Mentor are separate in the book, but in the movie they are combined. And then a couple of good examples of Heralds who are not also Mentors are Effie Trinket from The Hunger Games and R2-D2 from Star Wars. They don't really play any significant role in mentoring the hero, but they are the ones who arrive and tell the hero that there's something they need to go do. Over the course of their journey, the hero usually encounters multiple threshold guardians. This can be right when they are crossing over from the ordinary world into the world of adventure, or it can be at any point along their journey, along that road of trial stage. The threshold guardians are basically any obstacles that the hero has to overcome, any minor bad guys they have to face down, any tricks or challenges or tests that they have to get past. One of the most well-known examples of a threshold guardian is Cerberus, the three-headed dog from Greek mythology, who guards the entrance to the underworld. So, for instance, in the legend of Orpheus, Orpheus wants to talk to Hades to bargain for the life of his dead fiancé, who he loved very much and who died very young. But before Orpheus can even talk to Hades, he has to get past Cerberus. A three-headed dog as a threshold guardian also appears in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone with Fluffy. Now, Fluffy isn't guarding the entrance to the underworld, but he is guarding a trap door that something really important is hidden behind. So in the same way, he's the first obstacle that Harry, Ron, and Hermione have to get past if they want to save the Sorcerer's Stone from, theoretically, Snape, but actually Quirrell. When the villain is not acting on their own, sometimes some of the more minor bad guy characters will be threshold guardians. Like, for instance, the stormtroopers in Star Wars often act as threshold guardians. This doesn't necessarily mean that that's always the role that they play. For instance, Finn in the sequel trilogy definitely is not a threshold guardian, but just in general. And similarly with the orcs and the Nazgul in The Lord of the Rings, often they are kind of intermediate obstacles for the main characters rather than the ultimate problem that they're facing. But still, if you can't get past that, you're not going to get to Mordor. Two that I used to get confused are the Trickster and the Shapeshifter, but despite the names being a little bit confusing, they're actually very different. The Trickster is generally a positive character that causes mischief and shakes up the status quo, whereas the Shapeshifter is the kind of mysterious, enigmatic character that you're not sure whether you can trust. The trickster character appears in a lot of folklore, in trickster tales like Br'er Rabbit, for instance, and also appears in modern stories. I've seen Dobie from Harry Potter given as an example of a trickster character in a modern story, and I think that that fits pretty well. The classical Shakespearean fool is also a good example of the trickster character, and kind of exemplifies, I think, what it is that the trickster does, because the Shakespearean fool can call out the king in the way that nobody else can, and it'll all be taken as a joke, or at least it can be played as a joke. But, for example, the fool in King Lear just outright tells King Lear that he was an idiot for sending away his youngest daughter, who's the only one who loved him. So that ability to not even care about the status quo or what one does or doesn't do and say, and even though it can be very lighthearted and very amusing, also, we're pointing out some deeper problems there and kind of stirring things up. That's very much what the trickster does. 
The shapeshifter, on the other hand, is someone who might be a little bit mysterious or you don't know whether or not they're trustworthy or what their real agenda is, what it is that they're really working for. They might be helpful to the hero, they might be an enemy of the hero, you might not be sure whether they're helping or working against the hero. So like Snape in Harry Potter is a really good example of the shapeshifter. It's really unclear throughout the first five books where his true loyalties lie and who he's really working for. Sometimes it seems that he is protecting Harry and working for Dumbledore. Other times it seems like he might actually be loyal to Voldemort. In book six, it seems to be decided that yes, he actually is loyal to Voldemort. And then in book seven, it's revealed that there was actually something more complex going on. And he was like more complex even than like being a double agent. Rumpelstiltskin from Once Upon a Time also is very much the shapeshifter archetype. It's like he always has his own agenda. He has his own complicated plan. He might be working with or against the bad guy of the season, and he might be helping the heroes, but he might also have something that he wants from it that isn't what they want. That kind of uh, complex reasoning and always having some kind of hidden agenda, that also is very much the shapeshifter. According to Volger, the shapeshifter can also sometimes be a love interest for the hero, actually. And I was able to come up with some examples of that as well. In Greek mythology, for instance, Odysseus on his journey meets Circe and Calypso, who are these beautiful women who definitely have a romantic interest in him, but he is still wanting to get home to his wife, so he ultimately rejects them. I think both of those characters really fit well into the shapeshifter archetype in the way that they're complicated and they're not necessarily, they're not like the monsters that he normally faces, but they also are not necessarily trustworthy either. Another example is Kylo Ren from the Star Wars sequels. He definitely is the shapeshifter character in that his loyalties change over the course of the story and his agenda changes, what he's, what he's looking for, what he wants. And then also he does end up being a love interest for Rey, who is the hero archetype. In fact, in the first Hunger Games novel, I would also say that Peeta is a little bit of the shapeshifter. Because even though he is very much Katniss's ally and he is trustworthy and he will do anything for her, he also keeps a lot of secrets from her. He doesn't tell her, for instance, in the interviews that he's going to tell the world that he is in love with her. And he doesn't tell her that he's going to make an alliance with the career tributes in order to try and keep them from attacking her. So definitely there are points where she's not sure if he's trustworthy or where she feels a little bit betrayed by his actions. But in the end, he turns out to be definitely a very positive and trustworthy character. And then the last archetype that I wanted to talk about is the shadow. The shadow is basically the main villain that the hero is trying to overcome. Sauron, Voldemort, Grindelwald, the Wicked Witch of the West, the Big Bad Wolf, and so on and so forth. There can be more than one shadow character, for instance, in Star Wars, the Emperor and Darth Vader both fulfill that role. But I want to emphasize that it's not just any villainous character. It's THE villain of the story. There's not really an archetype that's just any villainous character. They could be the shadow, but they could also be the shapeshifter or the threshold guardian. There's also not a hero's journey archetype for the love interest. The love interest is usually either the ally or the shapeshifter, but there's not really like a specific archetype for that which I think is very interesting because actually there are a lot of like older folklore fairy tale kind of stories where the prize is to marry the princess, but the princess isn't really a character in her own right. So it's very interesting to me that there isn't an archetype that's just specifically love and trust with maybe some crossover between the categories. But in any case, that's not one that Volger lists on his uh, list of archetypes. And then the other one that I thought was really interesting that it wasn't included is the innocent bystander. Because I found that a lot of the stories that I am looking at, they do have a character that kind of represents, or more than one character that represents, all of the innocent people that the hero is trying to protect. Like Katniss's sister Prim in The Hunger Games, or like the people of Alderaan in Star Wars. Obviously, Luke isn't trying to protect them once he finds out that their planet is destroyed, but they're representative of the innocent people that the Empire is hurting. I think all of the hobbits in the Shire kind of fulfill a similar role in Lord of the Rings. So that's one character type that I thought it was very interesting wasn't included on the list. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and that you found what I've done on the hero's journey to be helpful. If you liked this and you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe. I post twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays.